So what's your opinion on population management? I've heard that every species has a max number that it hits. And for instance, the human species, when it can go any further or any larger than 12 billion people. Okay. Well, I have, I don't know that particular study. I'm not familiar with it. I, mm -hmm. I'm not surprised by it. It doesn't sound to me uh, that, it, that, it's, um, that it's not a, a model that's based on good science because I think if you really look at the current, uh, the current strain that we've put on resources and on the quality of air and water and soil, I think you have to question how many people can occupy the planet, how many, how many homo sapiens as an animal can occupy the planet before you run out, before you go, before you start to destroy the quality of living. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the bigger question. I mean, look, could you put 20 billion? Maybe, I mean, you know, but again, what does it look like? Right, yeah. How do 20 billion people live? I think the, the, the more important question is, how many people can live on this planet in a, first world and by first world uh, li lifestyle and by first world I mean you have access personal access to mm -hmm. clean water you have a bathroom you have a sink mm -hmm. you have a refrigerator you can access food mm -hmm. which means you have electricity you have a dwelling that is that is you know, that is safe and structurally sound that can, you know, that can sustain environmental conditions. Mm -hmm. um, you, there's enough food, quality food to feed you so that you right. are not just alive and surviving, but you're thriving, you're mm -hmm. healthy. Right. So I think one of the biggest issues here is that people don't stop for a moment and consider how many people can really live in a first world or by a first world standard. That's the real question. Right. We've got to stop asking ourselves how many people can, oh man, oh no, the planet, we can put more, more, right. you can have as many children as you want and it can just, we can just, no, that's not the question. We are, yes, we can just keep populating and that's going to have its own problems, mm -hmm. but that's not really the issue at hand. This is actually a humanitarian issue. And the humanitarian issue is that what people have become accustomed to in terms of personal comfort mm -hmm. is not what everybody's getting to experience. Right. So it's right. very easy for you to sit in your very nice home in your Scandinavian <laughs> village yeah. or your or your your United States, you know, your nice home there, your, yeah. your well, any of the, any of our very very um, you know, developed countries where we can sit in our homes, on our computers, and write a paper about you know the possibility of, of you know how many people uh, that, that that we can just you know populate the earth until the you know <laughs> you know just endlessly right. it, it, you know I think your attitude about population might be different if you lived in a third world environment if you had access to third world water. Mm -hmm. and third world food and third world conditions, I think it might change your perspective on pop, what population management looks like. Right. And because we're not talking about some, uh, some draconian, you know, Thanos, uh, we're going, you know, like you, you just kill half the world's population. Uh, you're talking about management, right. which means that you have to, you have to create certain boundaries around how many people can be born mm -hmm. based on how many people the environment that you've that you're existing within and the infrastructure that you've built can sustain mm -hmm. in a first world manner because i don't think anybody is i do not think 
that all these people who live in a first world condition are going to swap that out for a third world condition no. in order to make everything even. You want to make things a little more even? No problem. We all drop down to a second world, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, first world, third world, first world, second world. We, we, we meet in the middle. It is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. People are not going to meet in the middle and lower their standard of living. But the people down here want to improve their standard of living. Mm -hmm. So you're, there's always going to be this tension. Yeah. These guys are not trying to lower down. These guys are always trying to rise up. And at the end of the day, the only thing you can really do is start working with management of the population. And now a lot of people say, oh, well, we're, you know, there already shows, there's already a decline showing in many developed countries, mm -hmm. a population decline. Yeah. Yes, the decline, however, is not based on the gross number or total number of citizens. It's a decline in, 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 in comparison to the years before in terms of how many you know, people uh, were being born. Uh, so it does not actually reflect the, you know, it, it sounds like, oh, there are less people on the planet. Mm -hmm. No, there are just less people. This country is simply having fewer children which means that the citizens that already live in the country still still are alive and are, you know exist and are counted <laughs> then then you factor in the people that are producing children mm -hmm. in the country uh, are still creating exponent there's still exponential growth occurring you know exponential growth is when you know you have one person you know, or two people create a person and mm -hmm. three people, uh, you know, if, if two people create a, uh, an individual and then then this two people create then, you know, four and four then create six, that's just exponential growth. Yeah. So the idea that there's that you're only going to you're going to produce one person and suddenly like the population is going to start shrinking because less people are having children, you still have lots, be, in, in lots being millions. Yeah. There's still millions of people having children. Because right now, again, there's 9 billion people on the planet right at that. So if, if you've got millions of people still having children, the, the idea might be, oh, well, this aging population will start to die out, and then the new gen there'll be less people you know, you know, per capita in the, you know, in the population. But the reality is, is that might be, that might be true if you, if you're just to say, take Germany and say, okay, Germany has, let's just say Germany has a million people. So less people are going to stop producing Mm -hmm. children in Germany. So Germany, maybe it grows from a, each year, it goes from a million to a million, 100,000 next year to a million, 200,000. So maybe it actually starts to shrink, but it's not necessarily shrinking in the sense that its actual population is shrinking. Just its production of people right. is right, shrinking. Right, right. Yeah. But you've got other places in the world whose population is growing. So at the end of the day, the, the, the global population is not shrinking. We are continuously growing. We are, we are exponentially growing because, you know, for every you know, little pocket over here that growth is slowing down, mm -hmm. you've got another pocket over here where growth is expanding. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's until as a global community we come together and decide that, you know, you can only have so many children uh, because resources can only be replenished so quickly. Mm -hmm. And because this is another thing, it's like people say, oh, you know, we've got infinite resources mm -hmm. and we don't if you consider the fact that that resources are limited if the population that is consuming them is consuming them 
more quickly, then they can be replenished. So therefore they do become limited, yeah. even though if you were to define them in the natural world, you would say that is an infinite resource. It's, it's, it's water and it continues to return because it rains and, uh, or the mountains, you know, snow and then the water runs down, you know, through the river and returns to the ocean. This is the cycle. Yes, of course. But if you stick nine billion straws in that river yeah. and you suck all the water out there, there, you know, and then you're waiting on that to replenish, there is going to be a period where you do without. Mm -hmm. So this can replenish or everybody's, somebody's getting more than others. And so even though it's being replenished, it's not being evenly redistributed. Yeah. So, you know, this is the, this is the plight of man currently. We are not, we are not actually, you know, managing our population the way we would manage any other population on the planet. If, if, if the deer population got out of control, if the tiger population got out of control in, in a, in a village, in a city, in a what? Of course, you would deal with it. Right. It's a locust. If the mosquito population, anything that got out of control, and became a nuisance to us, mm -hmm. we would eliminate we it. We would interfere. Yeah. But, and, but not, and not, by the way, with population control. We would kill it. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Humans yeah. would just destroy it. Yeah. What we're talking about right now is not destroying humans. We're talking about actually having limitations on managing. on uh, managing or having talking about limitations on childbearing yeah. you know and and again it's just one of those things that it's going to have to become a conversation yeah. as our population continues to exponentially grow and we we are just really resistant to this conversation we don't like it because one of the most essential freedoms that a person feels they have is the right to bear a child, to have a son or a daughter, to bear an heir. Mm -hmm. And this whole, this whole mythology of bearing an heir and your son carries on your name and all this, well, yeah. and all this stuff that has created this almost uh, um, emotional, mm -hmm. mythological, urgency yeah. to bear children and then on top of that the, the urgency for people to bear children because they need so much to see themselves replicated in the world yeah right they need to see they need to have the experience of bearing a child or they who's going to take care of me when i die when i get yeah. older yeah who will who will take me you know who on. will carry the bloodline of a religion who will say. carry the bloodline of our belief system yeah, a belief system yeah there, there, there are so many different reasons people have children besides the fact that having a child is in really, 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 I mean, I'm a father mm -hmm. and I have a 17 year old daughter. Having a child is an incredibly rich experience that really changes you as a person and, and it does force you to ask yourself very important questions that you don't ask yourself when you don't have the responsibility of another human mm -hmm. when you don't have to parent when you don't have to make sure this other this other being lives mm -hmm. like like the literally their life their life is in your hands yeah. they're, 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 you know it's 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 an, an incredibly big responsibility and there is literally no standard by which we measure a person's ability to take on this responsibility and it is massive mm -hmm. and it is not just something that uh, people in our current society are born able to do mm -hmm. parenting is a skill yeah you learned it from your parents you hopefully had parents that were skillful parenters mm -hmm you know yeah. skillful at parenting uh i just made a word up parenters but if you had skillful parents 
then you'll more than likely pass on those same skills. But so many people are no longer being parented well. Mm -hmm. They're no longer learning those essential skills. And they're not, we're not producing the kind of human being that, that a human is capable of becoming. Mm -hmm. We're limiting human beings' experiences by putting them in these very poor environments where, there's, where they're very limited yeah. with, in, in terms of education, in terms of experience and wisdom. They're, just, they're, they're very malnourished. And, and if we just continue to produce, and I'm using this word very, just for, the lack, for lack of a better word, yeah. but if we continue to produce more and more people without having some type of standard, without having some type of even global standard, not just for the kind of, like, can you care for that child? Are you economically um, in a position to bear mm -hmm. that responsibility? Yeah. So it, again, it's, it's, it go, it is, of course, it travels far beyond intelligence. Yeah. Are you even economic, economically able to provide? Um, there, there's so many conditions that are, that must be, I think, um, standardized. And I know, you know, people are going to say, you sound like some type of crazy, um, nor, you know, this is some type of Orwellian, mm. um, you know, book, futuristic, you know, neo-Nazi, you know, people, are, people have all kinds of ideas yeah. in their head about what kind of person you must be to reach the conclusion that human beings must have some type of boundary in terms of population. Yeah. They just can't wrap their head around the fact that, that it's not okay for me to just do whatever the fuck I want. I just want to have a baby. I want to have five babies. I want to have 10 babies. And yeah. you know what? It doesn't matter how much I strain or stress or disturb the social, the social agreements. And, and I think this is what's missed. We live now in a society. It matters what you do. Mm -hmm. It matters how many kids you have. It matters how many kids of yours go to the school system. It matters how much you're participating with your taxes. It matters how you're treating the, 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 the utilities and the infrastructure. It matters if you're, if you're the kind of citizen who is contributing or actually just you know, stealing and taking. Mm -hmm. It does matter. Yeah. And to act like it doesn't is basically you, know, you just disregarding the, the responsibility of being a citizen. Right. We have to recognize there is a responsibility and an obligation, and it's implied when you choose to live in a society, it's implied that you are in some way in service to the, to the, to the well-being of all. Yeah, to the collective. It's Definitely. a collective, the collective. end. Yeah. And so, so just, just having unregulated you know, population growth of any animal on the planet mm -hmm. clearly is in contradiction to what is sustainable, what is logical, mm -hmm. what, is, what is going to produce the kind of outcome that, again, who wants to live in a first world condition when, when you're surrounded by poverty and destitution and disease and, 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 and crime? Who wants to live in, what, in, on an island while all of that is around you? Right. No, yeah. this no. is not it. This is not the answer. Yeah. And if anybody is willing to trade their own little world that's nice and insulated from all of the other people suffering, if they're okay with that, they're just a shitty person. Mm -hmm. There's a shitty human. Right. I'm, what I'm talking about is actually very empathetic. I'm talking about something that's actually in, in, it's in, uh, trying to find the right word, but I am, I am concerned. I am genuinely, um, wanting to contribute to the betterment of humanity mm -hmm. 
rather than just to the betterment of my own personal experience and right. comfort. Right. So I am in action. My intention is to address a situation in a way that produces a more even experience for human beings. You can't produce an even experience. And I believe, honestly, everyone, I don't, I can't say I believe everyone deserves it because I don't, that word, I don't, you, mm -hmm. no, nobody deserves anything, you know. So I'm, but, but why? I think it begs the question, why does everyone not have a chance at it? Why shouldn't we do what is right for everyone to have a chance at equality of living? Yeah. But it's not going to happen until we manage the population because you cannot produce even wealth and an equal distribution of, of technology and comforts. You cannot distribute that even today, if you tried to give everyone in the world a first world experience with their products, and their homes, their, their mm -hmm. food, and everything, there would not be enough resources on the planet. Okay. There, there wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. We don't literally have enough resources to give 9 billion people a first world experience. Yeah. But we would like, to, but what people are always talking about, oh, we do, we do, we don't, mm -hmm. we don't. Because the amount of excess and opulence that a first world person is living in, the amount that we actually have that is beyond what we need, you can't replicate it for 9 billion people. Mm -hmm. And if you did, even if you did, you would be at the maximum of straining the, 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 our, the population's ability to produce. Yeah. It, you, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so at the end of the day, you have to remember, if people really want equality, we have to shrink the population. Mm -hmm. The shrinking the population is not by killing people. It's by just slowing down the growth and minimizing the growth until we're, you know, again, at a place where we really are, you know, sustainable and working with the, the, the environment in a very healthy way. Right. And until we do that, there will never be equality of, of distribution, of wealth. There will never be. So anybody who's even believing that, it's a fantasy. Mm -hmm. And But a lot of people, again, will not discuss population control as a means to get us to a place where we are actually all experiencing equal opportunity and equal comfort and equal, you know, equal um, personal growth and joy and pleasure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie and tell you that I don't enjoy being able to read my books and, you know, go here and being, have, have a well-built this or a well-built that or mm -hmm. enjoy. I mean, I'm not going to pretend that I don't enjoy my first world products. I don't, I love my bathroom. I love my running water. Yeah. I love my washing machine and my dry. I love all the technology that we've produced. But again, if you try to distribute it to every single person on the planet right now, it would not work. Mm. So what is fair then? That we have those who have and those who don't? Or that we limit the right. amount of human beings and then distribute the wealth evenly so everyone's living at a first world level of comfort. Mm -hmm. And that's population control.